Hi, so I'm sitting on the floor of the lab because what I've got here is a big old bucket of water that weighs about um, 25 kilos. So before I went away, I was working on the um, swag and I was going to make a really super duper nice fancy prototype that everybody could go wow at, you know, swashing it around, maybe a pump to pump it in and out, that sort of stuff. And I thought, well, hang on a sec, maybe I'm getting too carried away here. Maybe uh, what I really need is something very, very simple so I can see what kind of effects they're having without expending a lot of time, money and effort into building something that may or may not work properly. So I decided to rejig my thought processes a little bit and basically do it in a big bucket of water. What's wrong with that? If it works, that's just Jim Dandy. So I took 24 litres of water and I added some salt to it. Now the concentration of seawater is about 35 grams of salt per litre, more or less, somewhere around about there. So I chucked 420 grams of salt in here, which is about half the concentration of seawater, and tried the swag generator plates on it. And sure enough, I, I got a reading out of it. And then I decided to uh, try double that amount, so the same concentration of seawater, and surprise, surprise, the reading doubled, which I thought was actually very cool. And then it occurred to me that I was doing this stuff without actually showing you, and maybe I ought to stop just right there and do a video on it so you can see where we're at with things and then we can take it on from there. So as I said, what I've got here is a bucket full of water with the same salt concentration as the sea. And here are my 10 swipe blades. Now I've been through how to make these before. So there's 10 pieces of A4 plastic that have been painted with my graphene paint. Um, and then underneath the graphene paint, but on top of the plastic, are some current collectors, which are basically copper strips that have been glued down to either side of the plate, then overpainted with the um, graphene ink. Then what I did was get some metal clips and clip all those coppers uh, together to make good contact on them and saw the wire along so that I could connect all those templates together. Because so many people go, hey, that's galvanic, what I then did was dip these edges into bitumen to seal them up. So that all we're getting really is the um, interaction between the salt water and the ink on the plates that is then being carried to the current collector. Or at least that's the theory, okay? Uh, and that's what I hope is happening. Now, in order to measure this, what I've done is I've connected up an ohm meter, a digital ohm meter, and I put it onto the volt reading, and then across that, I've actually connected, there we go, a 10 ohm resistor. That 10 ohm resistor is acting like a low load for me. So if it's pulling across the resistor, then we've actually got a load that it's working on, and we can work out the volts, amps, and watts that this thing is actually uh, doing. Now, it's a weird system, so it's probably not going to be amazingly accurate in those terms, but it's certainly going to give us ballpark figures and certainly going to give us figures of comparison. So if I'm getting a uh, 0.1 volt reading across that 10 ohm resistor, I know I'm getting 0 0.01 amps, more or less. Then if I double it, I do something to this and it changes it so it becomes a 0.2 volt reading and I get a 0 0.02 amps out of it, then I've got a comparison. I can see that what I'm doing is making an improvement. So as long as I keep the setup the same, I'm going to be able to make some judgment about what's going on in here and make some rough ideas about how much power this thing is actually generating. So that's the idea here. And like I say, it's a bucket of water and some plastic paint, okay? So we're still playing around with it because obviously salt concentration has a big impact on it. Like I said, double the salt, double the power. Now, I only did it this way because um, I was thinking about dipping this in the sea. And then a whole lot of other considerations came to mind when I actually then considered enclosing it and having the sea act as a driving force against whatever ionic fluid that we put in there. So we can change that salt concentration and the makeup of this in the bucket quite easily to optimize this system. And like I said, Doubling the salt concentration doubles the output, and that's kind of very cool. Anyway, it's enough of me chatting for the moment. Let's have a look at it. So I doubled the um, salt concentration. It's now about 70 grams per litre. We're getting improvement. It's now reading 140, 137, 138. 
Okay, so we've tried our uh, 50%, 100%, our 200%, and I can't say it's particularly impressive. I mean, it's cool when you think about what it is, a few painted sheets dropped in some salt water, but not particularly impressive. Now, I'm wearing rubber gloves because I want to isolate me from the experiment, not because this is dangerous. This is salt water. You could drink it. Um, actually, you couldn't drink this particular one because now what I've done is I've chucked in 160 grams of copper chloride. And the reason I've done that is based on the Chinese stuff. Uh, where they say that copper chloride has a better and bigger impact. Now, 160 grams in 24 litres is not very much. It's about uh, 0.05 molar solution, something like that. So, quite a small concentration, really. But if I take my plates and drop them in... Look at that. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> That's going up 270, it reached there. 267. Oops, I've <laughs> broken my lead. <laughs> 267. Okay, so we did quite a lot there actually, and um, it probably deserves a bit of a summary. I mean, essentially, what we did was fill a tank, put some sodium chloride in there, concentrations of 50. 100 and 200 as a percentage of the concentration of seawater. So seawater is 35 milligrams per litre. We put in 17 and a half milligrams, 35 milligrams and 70 milligrams per litre to um, test what was going on. And sure enough, as we increased them, we got an increase in output. So this was about 0.09, this was about 0.012, this was about 0.014, more or less. And um, that is the kind of impact you expect to have. Now, as you increase the salt concentration, you can get to about as high as 350 grams per litre, I think is what the max out on sodium chloride is. But working on that Chinese paper when it talks about the impact of the different fluids and the different salts that you would have on there, what we did was decided to use um, copper chloride. So I stuck in 160 grams of copper chloride. Now, the reason I put 160 grams of copper chloride in is because that's what I've got. I don't have any more. And that works out as about 0.05 molar solution of copper chloride in there, which is pretty low. And actually, the impact was astonishing. That shot up to 0 0.27, I think. Uh, so almost doubled it for a tiny part of copper chloride going in there. Now, obviously, that's a huge indication of what we should be looking at. I mean, we clearly need to be looking at this and the concentrations of that. So I've got to go away and buy some more of this stuff, unfortunately, and mend the little tank that broke off. But I have to go away and buy some more copper chloride and play around with the concentrations of copper chloride to see what will happen. Or what will happen. We ought to also have an investigation into what other ionic fluids are going to have a good impact on this, because remember, it's now a sealed system. The system's um, been sealed to stop fouling, and the sea will act like a pump to pump this fluid over the swamp plates. But if you think about that, which was over a 10 ohm resistor, and these are all volt readings, incidentally, they're in the volt range. We put that over a 10 ohm resistor, which means we're getting about 0 0.027 uh, amps out of it. Not massive, if you multiply that amps, I think you get about 0 0.08 watts, something like that. But remember, watts are joules per second, so if we multiply that by 3,600, then we get the number of watts per hour, which works out at about uh, 26, I think. So this little setup is giving us about 26 watts per hour. Um, I think that's cool. <laughs> I'm kind of really pleased with that, actually, to give us some idea of what we're producing from our 10 sheets of swag as we dip it in and out there. Now, obviously, um, I want to continue with this because I think this is exciting. I, I think um, I'm doing a fairly ham-fisted job just right now, and that looking at the ionic fluid concentration to up that is very, very doable. We see what effect that 0 0.05 molar concentration will have. About doubles it, really. So, what will happen if we stick in a 1 molar concentration? What kind of effect are we going to have? I've got to test that now and find out and get back to you. But I thought I'd keep you up to date with where I was with the swag so that you would know that we're still working on it and hopefully you find it interesting anyway and this is of interest to you. So, thank you very much for watching.